Welcome. This video is going to show how to make a chair in Inventor. This chair is part of the CAD Challenges set of models for higher graphic communication. To begin with, we're going to start by selecting a new 2D sketch and then a vertical work plane. What we're going to do is draw the sectioned view on the bottom left of the orthographic and then revolve that. So to begin with, take the line tool and draw from the centre a line horizontally to the left, 750 millimetres. Now it's 750 because you need to add 50 to the 700 in the drawing for the thickness of the seat. We're then going to draw a line vertically up the way by 50 millimetres. And then horizontally to the left by 700. This will give the bottom part of the seat. We then want to draw the back part. So we're going to draw a line up by 650 millimetres here. And then on the back edge, we're going to draw another line up about the same height. You're going to trim these lines afterwards. So as long as this lines up about the same height, it'll be fine. We're now going to draw the circle at the top, which represents the tubular frame that holds the seat. To do that, we're going to select the circle tool. And in the top corner here, we're going to draw a circle of 250 millimetres in diameter. Again, look closely in the drawing to see that size. Now, using the trim tool, we can trim away some of the lines. You might find your circle moves when you do this. So what I'm going to do is actually hit the escape key here and then just delete this line and draw it in place to complete the outline shape. Just before we move on, I'm going to dimension the circle so we can strain its position in case it moves on us. Now the seat's going to be created using the revolve feature. Just going to zoom out. So I'm going to select revolve. You can see we've got a blue outline shape, which means it's going to work. And if I select the center axis, what happens is it's going to draw, I rotate that profile shape round by 360 degrees. Now we only want half, so we're going to change it to 180. And there we go, we've got the big part, the in part of the seat. Now we're going to do the legs next. To do the legs, we need to put a new work plane in, but I'm going to do this first. I'm going to select a new sketch and select this surface, and then use project geometry, which is going to find a little center point for us, which is going to be helpful when we come to put the work plane in. We're going to use the parallel to plane through a point option, so we can select under the origin, the center work plane, and then select that point that we just created a minute ago to put the work plane in the right place. If we draw on that, we can now draw what, uh, the line we need. We're going to use the sweep feature for this, so we're going to draw a path for the circle to draw around. So from the center point, we can draw it down 600. That'll find the center point of a, uh, for our circle. And we can then draw a circle in place, like so. Now we only need half the circle, so we're going to draw a, a line like so, so we can use the trim tool, leaving just half a circle left. From the bottom end, we can then draw a line horizontally to the left to create the path. Now we don't need these vertical lines, so you can either turn them to construction lines or just delete them. There we go, so we've got a path in place. Now for the sweet feature, you need to have a path, which is this line here. And if I just remind you by going up to the top here, you also need to have a profile, which is a 2D shape, which is dragged along the path. So to create the 2D shape, we're going to select this surface just here. And we're going to draw a circle at the very end of the line. Now you can use project geometry, which will project the circle's geometry onto your work plane. That allows you to find the centre accurately. And we can draw a circle out to the size we need. We can then use the sweep feature. Profile is already selected, so we can select the path. And there we are, the legs created, the circles dragged along the path. We can go to the modeling tree and select the work plane. So right click on work plane and click the visibility button. Now to do the other side, we can use the mirror tool to mirror features across. So I can select the feature we want, just gonna select sweep one from the modeling tree 
and the mirror plane I'm going to origin and I'm going to select the centre work plane and mirror across the feature. Okay, next thing we need to move on to is we need to extrude the seat further forward. It's not quite forward enough if you look at the drawing. So we're going to extrude it forward by 300. So first of all, I'm going to select this surface here and do a new sketch. So we can see we can go view, slice graphics, and now delete the part of the model that's this side of the work plane so we can see what we want to draw. And using the project geometry, we want to select the outside edge of this part of the seat. So these lines are projected onto our work plane so we can use them as part of this new sketch. And to ensure an outline shape, we're going to draw some lines across the top from this point here to here. And the same on the other side. There we go. So this allows us now to extrude that profile shape out. There we are, and it's extruding by 300. Remember to make sure it's added material that's in the right direction. Okay, so the last part of the making, we need to fillet the back edge of the chair. And that's getting filleted by 100 millimeters. So we're looking to select this edge just here and we're going to make it 100. And there we go. Okay, last of all, let's add some materials. So we can click on Tools and Appearance. The chair is a yellow uh, color with a brown sort of leather uh, seating area. So let's search for yellow. Remember to click the arrow to put it onto the top line. We want the whole thing yellow, so we can drag a box around the whole shape. That selects everything and right click and go sign to selection for the brown seating part. Let's search for brown. Okay, let's go with this one here. Click there to put it on the top line. We can then select the surface we want to add the material to. Right click and add a sign to selection and we've colored that part brown. Okay, last of all, let's go and do a nice rendering. So for the rendering, we want to go up to where it says view. Change visual style to realistic. We can turn on the shadows and reflections, if you like, and select an environment. I'm going to select soft light this time. Once it loads, we can then change the view to perspective. And before we click retracing, let's adjust the angle so it feels a bit more natural. So we've got eye level in the right place. Okay, slight ray tracing. When the pop-up window uh, appears, low is good enough for what we need for these models. When a slider gets to the far end, click the save button. There we are. Okay, so choose where to save it. Select the TIFF, the best option, and call it something sensible. There we are. Thank you for watching.